everybody, how is it going? This is Doctor Who. This is season 25 and this is part one of Remembrance of the Daleks. So at the end of the last season we met Ace in Dragonfire and now Ace is travelling with us because Mel decided she was going to go off with Glitz and basically just keep him in line and look after him and just ensure that he wasn't getting into any bother. And I was really sad actually because I really grew to enjoy Mel and like Mel as a character. So I'm quite sad that we only really got her for that one full season because I think she was just great. Her screams were unbelievable. I've never heard anything like it. But I don't know, there was just something about her that I just genuinely warmed to. And I think that's mainly because of Bonnie. And Bonnie is just so good when you watch her. And it's just, it was lovely to see it. She's like a little spitfire. And I think that's why I liked her character so much. So I'm interested to see what the relationship between the Doctor and Ace is going to be like, because we learned that Ace is actually only 16. So she's really young to be going off traveling on her own anyway regardless of whether it's with the doctor or not so that'll be an interesting dynamic to explore i'm also looking forward to seeing what they have in store in terms of this story because remembrance of the daleks makes me feel like there's been some kind of death scenario and they've died or some of them have died or there's been something where a lot of them have been killed and i'm intrigued by this a lot i'm just going to get straight on into this let's go our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet we all breathe the same air we all cherish our children's future what's going on I have a and one day this nation will Oh! Oh my god, my heart can't take this. I'm not really sure whether boom boxes are good. Edition. Well, clothing's a little anachronistic for this time period. Nope. It's not my fault this decade's got no street cred. <sighs> I mean, look at that kid. I just love how he wanders off, you know. You're not carrying any Nitro 9 explosives in there? Probably. No. What do you make of that van? Don't know. TV detector van? Why don't you go and buy some consumables? There's a cafe down there. So uh, consumables. I, I a scientific examination of that van that has so singularly failed to grab your attention. Right. To be honest, I'd be with this. I'd go get like chips. Money. Oh, Thanks. nice to know he has money. This go round. Does he know which school this is? Oh no. Never trust a child playing alone. She doesn't talk to strangers. Very wise. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. It's a doctor at the gate. Mm, you took your time. Get in the radio and tell the group captain. I think I've located the source of magnetic fluctuation, perhaps. A rhythmically passed fluctuation, yes. Who I is this woman? Any possibility of natural phenomena? Not likely, it's a repeated sequence. So, it's artificial... What is going on? Yes. Excuse me. Yeah? Who are you? Oh! Doctor. I'm Rachel. Professor Rachel Jensen. Hi, Rachel. How do you do? Rachel? I like Rachel Hello, already. Proceeding. Listen, group captain, there's this man... What? Military. Oh, Lord! You better come and take a look. Oh. Oh my lord. No evidence of tissue damage. Ah. Massive internal displacement. What? His insides were scrambled. Oh! Very nasty. The effect of the blast? No. Something else. Projected energy weapon. Death ray? Very succinct. Dalek. I presume you've got reinforcements coming. Any minute now. A death ray. It's unbelievable. Oh! Predictable response. How's Matthews? 
Who's dead? Is Blue One responding? Why are they hiding in all these yes, bodies? Be in a dead, are you sure? Ugh. Whatever fired that weapon's trapped in there. There's no way out. How can you be sure? I've been here before. We have an armed hostile pegged up in that lean-to shed. <laughs> I want the squad to cover the entrance. No firing unless I give the command. Is that understood? Remember, he's armed and hostile, so keep under cover as much as possible. I don't think you realize what you're dealing with here. Doctor, I assure Does he you know it's Daleks? They can deal with anything, provided they can see it. Oh! oh that fall was amazing! This is amazing! What was it? That was your death ray. I know that, but how? To transmit focused energy at that level? It's incredible. It's... Yes. It's beyond the realm of current technology. If we can save the science lecture for a less precipitous moment. You must pull your men back now. It's our only chance. It's preposterous. We can't disengage now. I think Whoever's he knows there, it's a Dalek. Sergeant! Listen to me, Brigadier. Group captain. Nothing you possess will be effective against what's in there. Sir. Three men, rifle grenades, even spread left, right and centre. Fire on my command. Yes, sir. Captain, you're not dealing with human beings here. No. What am I dealing with? Little green blobs in bonded polycarbide armour. We're not ready, sir. Group Captain Gilmore. Fire. Oh, Lord. Humans. Fire! Doctor, my men have just put three high explosive grenades into a confined area. Yeah. Nothing even remotely human could have survived that. That's the point, Group Captain. It isn't even remotely human. Ha <laughs> ha! I love that he's on fire. Please, give me some of that nitro nine that you're not carrying. Quickly. There's another. This one is too. I should hope so too. And how long the fuse? Ten seconds. That's long enough. Three, four, five, six. Move. I think he's okay. Just find his hat. <coughs> Ace, you said ten seconds. Nobody's perfect, Professor. Who is this man? Sorry, sir, this is Mr. Ratcliffe. He's brought some of his men. I think they can be of some use to us. You do, do you? What, what does he do? Mr. Ratcliffe, pleased to meet you, sir. What? What do you think we should do? Well, you're the chief scientific advisor. It's your decision. Before I make any suggestions, I want to catch up with the doctor. Who is he anyway? Someone who knows a lot more about Daleks than we do. Good afternoon. And you would be the doctor. And you? I'm the headmaster here. Doctor, eh? Yeah. Well, you're a bit overqualified for the position, but if you would like to leave your particulars and references. References? You are here for the job as school caretaker. Oh, no, we're here for a completely different reason. We've got reason to believe there's a great evil at work somewhere in this school. You'll have to be a bit more specific. Is this Michael Sheard, by the way? But I don't think it would do any harm if you were to have just a quick look round. You were expecting these Daleks, weren't you? Yes, they're following me. I wouldn't be so pleased if I had Daleks on my case. You can always judge a man by the quality of his enemies. Oh. Is this Ian's classroom? What do you make of that? Well, the landing pattern of some kind of spacecraft, isn't it? Very good. Oh! But this is Earth, 1963. Well, someone would have noticed. I'd have heard about it. Do you remember the Zygon Gambit with the Loch Ness Monster? Or the Yetis in the Underground? No! This species has the most amazing capacity for self-deception, matched only by its ingenuity when trying to destroy itself. Oh my god! I can't cope! If the Daleks are following you, what are they after? When I was here before, I left something behind. What? You mean the Hand of Omega? Yes. My men have recovered the machine. The Doctor is cooperating with the military. That is to be expected. I must be informed of his movements. Yes, yes, we have our contacts. I shall see that he's followed. That Dalek machine. Yes. I should like to know exactly what it is. A machine. A tool. Nothing more. It's a transmitter. A matter transmitter. A transmitter from where? 
Within about 300 kilometers. Professor? Professor, something's activating it. Very likely. Get off! There's an automatic activator. What? You're right. Something is beginning to come through. It's another Dalek. Excellent. Will this one be friendly? I don't know, Dalek. Is that, is that a Dalek? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to just get the transmitter to defase at the critical point. Doctor! Quick, down! Oh, oh, oh. Yes, the defaze must have caused an overload. What did you do to it? Well, I persuaded one half of the Dalek to materialise where its other half was materialising. The two halves tried to coexist at the same point. And they couldn't! The resulting reaction destroyed it. <laughs> Dangerous things, Transmats. So no more Daleks oh. can be transported through here? Well, it'll slow them down a bit until the operator can repair the systems. And that would be another Dalek? Yes. Stay where you are! Oh my god, I can't believe he just did that! episode I've watched in a long time. This was amazing. The fact that we're not only at Coal Hill School, we're here in 1963, we're in a science classroom. All that's going through my head is I really want to see Ian and I really want to see Bubs. But because it's 1963, they're obviously off with Hartnell's doctor and Susan. Lovely as always to see Michael Sheard in something, especially a Doctor Who, because he's just brilliant in Doctor Who. But knowing that the Daleks are following the Doctor, that totally came out of the blue, but I don't care because it's just brilliant. And then to know that there's this thing called the Hand of Omega. The only time we've ever met Omega, we knew the guy went a little bit crazy because of the whole black hole thing and the antimatter and his face was gone and he was literally just existent because he willed himself into existence. So that's going to be an interesting thing to find out. Why do the Daleks want it? Because I'm assuming that's what this is all about. Maybe it's got something to do with life. I don't know. Maybe the will is still in this hand. I'm not too sure. I'm looking forward to finding out though. Totally going to go watch part two. I will see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you.